Joining me now on the Knicks Film School podcast, as is a time honored tradition, um, I I imagine you were on episodes 100 and 200. I can't imagine why you wouldn't have been on those episodes. Um, Nick's Film School himself, forever and always, Jeffrey Ballone. Uh, <laughs> the shadow of Nick's Film School now, right? Really? Well, listen, you've moved on to bigger and better things. And um, I, it's just, it's staggering to me that you. So here, here, look, you came up with the Twitter account. What has it been? Is it four years or is it more than four years? Geez, that's a good question. Did, what, 2018 around then? Did we start? 27? Well, no, I'm talking about the, the original, like when it with the Ron Baker video. Yeah, I think it was around that time frame, right? 2017, 2018. It was, you're, you're worse than with dates than me. At least 2016, if not earlier. It was summer. It was the summer before. I'm trying to convince myself I haven't been doing this that long. Well, I'll try, <laughs> try with somebody else because I have a, I apparently have a better memory than you. Um, but, uh, and then, you know, the, uh, the Twitter account, the website and, and then the newsletter. And now you got the metropolitan with, you know, and, and Mets fix and you're, you're reinventing the game again. You have former players and front office execs writing for you. Like, what is this? This is craziness. <laughs> I needed something, you know, going from you writing for the Knicks stuff. I needed to come up with something good on the Mets side. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it, it's fun. I mean, you knew, like, I, I always need something, a new challenge, I guess I call it. But it was like, I don't know. I just need, I felt like I needed a different topic to wrap my mind around. And baseball is great for that because there's so much data. There's so much stuff. I mean, you could spend years, yeah. like, going through, you know, different iterations. So, so yeah, well, that's why basketball is up. good for me. Cause I have a simple mind and I could just focus on like a couple of things. Your mind is probably better suited for baseball. For <laughs> well, no, the thing though, it is interesting now, it, um, you know, when I come back eventually to write some more Nick stuff is, you know, I did the film breakdown. I didn't actually do a lot of like advanced stats, which I look at a little bit more now, obviously for baseball, but I think it's because basketball, it's just different. It's funny. It's better for the film than baseball is. So to do like Mets yeah. film school is kind of tough, but some of the stats, like, you know, there's different things people are doing to look at, like how you can prevent three pointers and how much you, yeah. your defense has to say in that. But it, there's just not as much like individual data points to, to build up. It's funny. I was thinking of you um, yesterday when I was writing the, my uh, Julius Randall all-star case uh, newsletter. And um, I was on basketball reference and I was looking up a uh, VORP and uh, <laughs> uh, what, what is a BPM and RPM and all this other nonsense, you know, but it, and I, I don't think, I don't think basketball is to the point yet where baseball is because like, you know, you have a, you have a guy like Randall who's like 10th in two of those categories. And he's like 69th in another category. And like these things are essentially looking at the, the same stuff. Um, yeah. It's, it's been, um, it's been quite a journey. We're recording this on what Wednesday spring training open today. So that's yep, fun. That's right. Yeah. yeah well, and the other thing I was thinking about too, because I don't want to make people think who haven't seen the Mets fix stuff. It, it's all like advanced stats because it's really not. Oh no. You wrote about Goodfellas the other day. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> yes. But I think what it is, is more, it's more speaking to, for me, like for instance, the biggest thing right now in baseball research is all about uh, like the spin of a pitch and basically how do different things impact how the ball moves. So I'm watching the Knicks game the other night and I'm thinking about like with Randall, like shooting, a, you know, shooting what seven, three pointers he made. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it, it'd be funny. Like in basketball, you're not, you might look at the, sh the form of the shot, right. But you yeah. don't have like data to say, you know, Oh, the ball is like spinning differently out of his hand. But I guess what I'm getting at is like, it's interesting because, like with Randall, and I'm interested even in your thoughts with him, it's like, it's, it's not as easy as in baseball to say, okay, well, I can look at this pitcher's fastball and I can tell based on its spin rate why it's performing better this year. Where in basketball, it's a lot more of how does this person kind of fit in yeah. this cohesive unit? And maybe he's shooting pretty similar to how he shot before, just this year for some reason they're going in. I, it's, it's a little different when you think about it. I think 
the reason why, uh, so as you know, I'm not that smart. I, pr- I act like I'm smart really well. I am the best person at acting like I'm smart in the entire world. I think world. that's no, better than being smart. <laughs> I think it, I mean, it's got me this far. So um, what was I going to say? So, uh, but I'm, so that's why I like basketball because for me, there is like, there's just an unexplainable magic that happens when a team comes together in a certain way and things just like work. Now look, did Randall's off season preparation have a lot to do with why he's playing better this year? Absolutely. And did his better, you know, I think it could be as simple as that. That's why he's making more shots. Maybe he practiced more a certain way in the off season, whatever. And maybe that had a, had a trickle down effect with the rest of the roster. But I think a lot of this is just like, there's, it's just like good vibes right now hey, in the locker hey. room with whatever, you know, Tibbs has done and like the accountability, you know, like all the stuff we always just talk about on here. Um, you know, and but, that's by the way, what makes basketball fun, right? So to yeah. me, I, I'm explaining the difference in terms of research, but then to me, oh, look, I have my Mets of, cup that I'm drinking. Yeah. Now. I noticed yeah. that. You're drinking <laughs> that. But um, in terms of like watching it, I think that's actually why some, a lot of people get turned off by baseball is they feel like there's so much, you know, if, if you dive into the deep stuff, there's so much of the numbers stuff going on. It's hard to make sense of. And you don't get as much of the story like we're getting with the Knicks this year, right? Where, yeah, you have these magical teams that obviously come together in baseball. But I guess what I'm saying is like, there's just more of that cohesive where you're requiring a unit to come together. You're not individual at bats, individual pitching performances you yeah. are a unit of five and how you work together will dictate your success and those were those, the famous Knicks teams in the late 60s early 70s yeah. that's what everyone loved about them they sort of defined before the warriors of modern times that let's move the basketball and do all these great things um so that that to me is what's fun about the sport yeah and even if you look at like the two teams like look at the 12 13 team they had that won 54 games. Like they weren't supposed to win that many games that year, but there was something, the mix of the vets and like how they played. And then they went into the following season and I forget what the exact over under was, but it was a hell of a lot better than what they ended up turning out because there was something missing from the, from the pot. Somebody forgot to put, you know, salt in the chili. Um, (laughs) Yeah. In any case. So, um, yeah, so you're, so you're doing that. You're, you're killing it. Um, Things do. Oh, I didn't even. T- do you know who you're? Who you're? Who this is coming on after? Because I told you I'm tacking this on to the. Oh end no, I don't actually. You, do you want to know? Previewed. Yeah, let's go for it. Uh, Mike Breen. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, yeah, he was awesome. Oh man, was he awesome? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Wow, um, that's real cool. But just think about it. You 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 messaged me, and you're like, "Hey, I'm doing this stuff for the Knicks wall. Would you want? Would you want to come write for us?" And now here it is, whatever, three years later. And, uh, you know, I got, I got Mike Breen on a, on a damn podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's a, no, that, is, that's awesome. It's been, it's been fun. It's been fun. I got, and I got a tip zoom coming up in, um, what half hour or so as we, okay. as we sit here and record this. Um, but, uh, well, thank you. That's what I want to say. That's really why I want to come on here. I, I want, I wanted to thank you for giving this platform essentially to me. Um, cause this would not be happening without you. And, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I miss the videos. That's all I, I will yeah, say. No, I miss, well, I miss doing stuff together. Cause I think, you know, like this week, you know, we were lucky at Mets fix to have, you know, some people promoted out and it's always that excitement when you're starting yeah. something from the ground up. Yeah. And I have to say, I miss that. It wasn't like, I'm used to with something happening that, that I'm creating, we've been doing it together. So I'm used to it sort of being like that. Yeah. This is something we share. It felt weird to have it without us doing it together like that. Um, I'm sure there's some saying about like, in order to grow, in order to grow together, you must grow apart or something like, <laughs> you know, I, I <laughs> yeah. there, now, now we're getting into real, the good thing this is way at the end of the episode. Everyone turned it off after Breen was done. Right. Um but we got to do, I guess, a little Nick commentary before I go. But, you well, know. yeah, sure. Let's let's do a little bit. Um, so we're, again, they're they're playing in a couple hours from now against Orlando. I don't, you know, hope I hope they win against Orlando. Orlando's two and eight in their last ten games. Um, that would be a, this would be a bad. It's weird to say, right? That this would be a bad loss bad for the loss, Knicks. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's if you want to encapsulate the Knicks season, right? It, a team that was picked to to win fewer games than any team in the league now is playing games against. 
last year's playoff teams. I know they're injured, but and if they and on the road, and it would be a bad loss if they lost. Right. No. Right. <laughs> um, I don't know. Have you enjoyed watching this year's team? Yeah. I mean, it is different too when you're not covering it the same way. Because mm. I used to always say this to Emily, where it's like there, especially in the early going where I was doing the videos so intensely, there would be like this great moment that everyone who's a normal fan is like cheering and going nuts. And I'm like staring at my phone because I'm reacting about how I get the content out. Um, so it's nice to, you know, I'm still doing a little bit of, of that for the Strickland yeah. account sometimes, but it's nice to be able to watch a game and just be like, I can just enjoy this. I don't, I'm not looking to create content, but that said on the other side of it, it's, it's weird though, too. I almost feel like, you know, hopefully you're doing this forever, but when you stop, it's almost like, it's hard, you know, it, it's like, you know, I almost feel like it, alcoholic sounds like a bad thing, but a person who gets used to uh, spiking a drink, you then can't drink. It doesn't taste the same. You know, if you uh, brought Gatorade as a kid to a concert or something, <laughs> then you try to drink Gatorade again. It's not the thing because you used to always spike it. Well, that's me a little bit with the Knicks too, where it's like, it's just odd not to comment on it or not to, you know. I would feel that way if I had nothing to do. Um, but like, you're like, you know, I hope you're doing this forever. I do not hope I'm doing everything that I'm doing right now forever, because I think I would die at 45. Um, <laughs> because I just, yeah, I don't know. Good. Someone, uh, Schwinn messaged me earlier. He's like, I could see the bags under your eyes during some of these post games. <laughs> um, but no, it's, I've actually stopped live tweet. I used to live tweet games like a madman. And this season, I really haven't been doing that. I've just been, I usually send out like maybe a couple tweets during the game and then I'll take notes this is what I'll do. I'll take notes on my phone about plays that I want to clip after the yeah, game. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Yeah. But like, no, I, I don't know. I honestly, I don't, I still don't know how you would clip games and watch the game. And like that. Yeah, no, it, that's it, why it you're you. crazy. But what about with Randall then? I mean, what, what's your, you know, obviously I've seen a red, but I mean, he obviously, you know, we could talk about a lot of things that have gone well this year and quickly and excitement with all that and Tibbs and what he yeah. represents. But I mean, the fact of the matter is, you know, Randall and, you know, independent about the whole all-star debate, it's just still of, you know, what does he represent now for this organization? I think that's, I think that has become the biggest, I think the the biggest question for the organization coming into the year was what is RJ Barrett's ceiling? And I think that the, the question now is what is Julius Randall's ceiling and what does he represent for them? Because... Mm-hmm. I think it's, I don't know, maybe it just happened on Monday night with the Atlanta game. At some point, though, in the last couple of weeks, it's changed over for me from like, oh, well, how do we, you know, what are, the, what, you know, are we going to get a big trade offer for him? Or like, you know, is he worth, like now I think like, oh my goodness, this is a guy, I, I just don't, especially coming off the poor thing. I'm not, I'm, I shouldn't talk about these things in unison because they're, it's, you shouldn't let one thing affect the other. But coming off the Porzingis thing, which is the only thing you've had good happen to you since Patrick Ewing, now to have this happen, to not to, to not to just toss that away in whatever way you want to do it, I just I don't know something about that it seems off putting to me. Yeah, and the whole like sell high concept. I think I, we were probably thinking the same way for a while. You're like his contracts went from no one liking it to his really good because it's not fully guaranteed next year yeah. oh, and then well, but you know, forget that now i mean there's nobody in the league that wouldn't guarantee that yeah well no right league. exactly right but yeah. so yeah so but the point is it gives the team that that option and then you know the fact that he is um still young you know i think that's the other thing like i was it's talking nice. to someone the other day or it was on a mitts podcast and you're asking me about the knicks <laughs> and i said are. young players and I said, young players. And I think when I, when you say that, everyone just thinks like bear it quickly, but it's like, no, like Randall fits in the window. Like he is not a 30 year old guy who's now having a late, you know, uh, resurgence to his career. Like he, he still has a, a, a wide window ahead of him. Yeah. And I've, I've looked into this, you know, last few weeks trying to find comps for what he's doing. It's like, it's, he's not the only guy that has had been a, a late bloomer. Um, but the number of guys throughout NBA history who have bloomed late and then become like, none of those guys have become like the centerpiece of a, of a, of a championship team. Unless you want to go for like kind of oddball, like Chauncey Billups, like that weird yeah, Detroit okay. team, like other than that, um, even like Weber kind of blossomed late, but he was also an all-star and his 
like very early on in his career in Washington and then kind of fell off. So what Randall's doing is, you know, it's, it's, I don't, it's not unprecedented, but in terms of the questions that the Knicks have to ask themselves now, I, I think, but the nice thing is you don't have to look at him in a vacuum because you had him happen and you have quickly happening. So I think those two things together have maybe, and Tibbs, so that's my reminder to check if I got my email for the uh, media <laughs> zoom. Um, those two things happening together with, with Tibbs and like the culture and the whole thing. I think all of that is like, okay, you know, we could start to think about the organization and how they build it out a little bit differently. Now I still don't envy them because he's still not the easiest piece to build around. And I think if you're really talking brass tacks, that's what it comes down to. But yeah, but you could also say it's, you know, if the decision is, do you sell high, meaning do you trade him? Then yes, the decision is now, but if the, dis- but if the decision is, is he a long-term centerpiece to your organization? The fact that you can just guarantee next season and have yeah. him for one full season, you have a whole year and a half before you would have to decide on that. You only have to decide now if for some reason you're like, well, we think this is the best he's ever going to be. We're going to get this unbelievable offer. So we're going to go for it. But otherwise, you can literally just say, look, we, we don't have to decide. We can ride this out for a, a year and a half and maybe add another piece next to him and see how he does with that other piece next to him and then decide, obviously, if they're going to keep him long term. Yeah, I, I guess maybe what I'm really what we're really saying is like, like they need to now start asking themselves, do we start to try to fit pieces around? Is he that yeah. good that we try to fit pieces around him? Even if he may not be ever the best player in a championship team, he's good enough to have earned the, uh, those conversations. So, yeah, no, I think that's I think that's well said. Um, Anything else? Anything else you want to do you think they're making the playoffs? I think they will at this point. I mean, the way that it's so it's spread, right? Where there's what we like should a say game top, and a half. There's, there's top six and then there's the four yeah. play in spots. So, yeah. But I mean, you know, some reason I, I just think with Tibbs, they're going to find a way to do it. I think so. Too. They're going to get in. I have a funny feeling. I think I, I, I also, I could definitely see them making a move this season that also puts them in much better position to, um, you know, to get in. I think they're going to make a move. I don't, I think they're going to make a move. I don't know what it's going to be, but I think they're going to make a move. Um, uh, just to uh, put a cap on this, can you inform all of the folks who are certain they did not turn off after, after Breen, like they're still, <laughs> can you turn, tell all of them where to find uh, the Metropolitan and, and you and, and everything you're doing now? Yeah, I guess we're, we're confused, confusing with our names because we're the Mets Fix, but the newsletter is Metropolitan. Okay. But the easiest way is to just go to at Mets Fix on Twitter. The link is there to sign up. Similar to Nick's Film School, you got an email every weekday morning, uh, 8 a.m. it comes out, except this morning when we got breaking news at like 7.58 and we had to jam that in there. Um, but yeah, and then right now it's free. So just sign up. And, you know, if we have people who aren't Mets fans that have reached out and said they just enjoy it because – you know, like I was alluding to at the front, I'll try to just get into kind of broad topics of, of baseball as well. That obviously it applies to the Mets, but you can learn some stuff about, um, you know, different research going on or whatever. But uh, I thought it's, it's yeah. rekindled my love for baseball, which really has not been there the last several years. I'm now at least interested in it. And um, it, you make it very it's informative, but at the same time, it's extraordinarily easy to follow for someone who is not a baseball nut like me. <laughs> um, so it's great. And you have other, uh, I, you know, Bernard, my buddy is obviously a loyal reader yes, as well, yes, right. as I know you've talked to him. 